Okay. Harvest frequently asked questions. Earlier this week, well, last week, we announced the uh, Harvest, which is set to launch on 19th of June in this league. We'll, you'll assist Oishabi as he explores the mysterious powers of Rager Brown and shortly plant seeds. Yada yada yada. In Harvest, you'll be able to find seed catch in each area. Yep, you take it. Uh, yep. That's a different property. Yeah, yeah, it tells us everything about it. Yeah, cool. Well, some of the things about it. Mm. Complete power over which seeds you like to pant. How many monsters you like to challenge yourself against at any time? And which crafting options you'd like to utilize? The crafting options provide benefits to characters at all levels and unlock a means of power not seen before in PoE. Yeah, the crafting stuff looks pretty fucking good. Really excited about introducing a league with a pace that differs from previous leagues and can wait to see how players build their characters around these new crafting options. Yeah, it's quite quite a contrast from going probably the the most clear speed oriented league because you had a you basically a timer for the entire area and you had to loot and kill at the same time to if you do not interact with the, the league mechanic, it's literally just Vanilla. I mean, obviously you could do the same with Delirium, but it's like slightly different. I think it's still a bit too loud. Oh. Do you see it stack? Yes. You can literally see this in the, the stack when they show us the item. Will uh, identical seeds of the same level will stack in your inventory and in the seed storage within the crowd, the level will be displayed on the seed in your inventory. How do I make my plants grow? By planting the seeds, going out, opening more seed caches. Kind of, kind of like what was mentioned. Seeds specify how many cycles of growth they regard before they'll be ready in the harvest. When you open a seed cache in the main game, it will count as one growth cycle within a garden. You don't need to enter your ga your garden in order to make the seeds grow, and their growth is tied to the passage of time. It's an it's interesting that the completion of maps doesn't include a cycle or like isn't considered as a cycle, but I guess you know one map is like five cycles. I, I assume every single map is gonna have the the same amount of. Uh, seed caches, so it doesn't matter what map you run, it you always get the same amount of cycles. And I, I vaguely remember there being mentioned five at some point. I might be just remembering correctly. Entirely incorrect, but yeah. What happens if I don't plant my seeds? Will they disappear? You can save them for as long as you'd like, or even trade them. Even trade them. You can also probably vendor them for wisdom uh, shards. That's that's very very good thing to keep in mind. Do I have to harvest my plants within a certain amount of time? No, they don't wither or die. Well, until you harvest and kill them, of course. So basically, so far every single question was answered within the the stuff that we were given, like literally at the start. If I don't feel like tending my garden, what happens if I skip entering the garden for a map? This has no negative effect on your garden, it just pauses your progress. You can leave it for as long as you'd like and, re and return to it when you are ready. Remember that this pause is also for non-reddit users. No, 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 I'm literally talking about the, the, the trailer and then on the, the leak page. I think. I'm sure there's gonna be a bit more uh, better like a uh, question. As well. How do I get garden equ equipment? And I mean, even that it's not it's not a bad thing to answer this. I mean, I I answer like simple questions about Atlas like on a daily basis, even to people who already know it. So it's it's fine. People forget. This is, this is like a good compilation of keeping the things, uh, you know, if there's like some things people forget, so uh, it's good to go back to. It. 
How do I get the garden equipment? You start with a small amount of each type of equipment to facilitate to facilitate getting your garden started. Some is some is already placed in your garden to ensure that it's easy to learn how things work as you progress through the game. It's likely that you can use life force to purchase additional pieces of infrastructure. It is likely. So that kind of alleviates the the problem of ever growing life force and capping it and you know feeling bad that your life force is capped when you can you just buy more of the current equipment you know going from 100k to 200k it's fine can I accidentally target my garden's infrastructure while I'm finding monsters? For a short window to activate as many collectors as you'd like. Wait, you have a short window to activate as many collectors as you'd like. After this window, you can't target anything else in your garden while monsters are alive. The exception to this is the portal to exit your garden in case you need to quickly flee in the danger. Yeah, this was new information. That's cool. Okay. I wish there was like a you select and then you press. And then it starts, kind of like we have it, you know, when when we play it, you can, you have like a timer before, but here you wouldn't, here where you have the first, like you click the first one, you'd start like a, like a slow uh, timer, and then you, if you really want, you can just go and click them. Like hope I hope the timer is long enough, and then just give us like the the speed up timer, so we actually have time to click all of them. I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but I, I can see it potentially being. Well, it's. I don't think it's gonna ever be a problem, but it would be fun to be able to like have your entire garden fully chewed up, and then you click all of these before you get to fight. You know, we'll be able to move or delete garden infraction if we'd like to change the placement. Yep, can I access the sacred core from my hideout. Yep. Wait, that's a different answer, Monka. How many new crafting options does Harvest introduce? There are over 45 crafting categories resulting in over 250 different possible craft effects. See, that didn't answer the actual question. The question was how many new crafting options? I mean, I guess they're all new because they use life force and and the, the, the you know, harvest creatures, but I'm pretty sure out of the 250 uh, craft, there's a lot that we basically have the same already, like the, with the coloring of items, socketing of items, etc. How do I know which crafting options I'll get? That's a wall of text. Each seed states which category your crafting benefit it provides so that you can prioritize planting seeds, which correlate to which crafting options you're interested in. When you slay the monsters from those seeds, their life force can be used to craft an outcome within that category. The specific outcomes you receive are listed on the crafting screen. The more life force you have in your collector from this fight, the more options you will be able to use out of the set you receive. For example, if you plant 8 seeds that grant reveal to random fuse modifier, slay those monsters and gather the life force, you'll be presented with different options with outcomes like reforge, rare... Uh, okay... You may have multiple uses of some of these based on the randomly determined outcome of each hit. Yeah, so, that, so that's what I was looking for. So it's it is random. Nice. There will be a total of eight outcomes, including the multiple uses. Though you'll usually not have enough life for to use them all, but you'll hopefully get get and be able to afford the one you really wanted. Okay. This, this kind of feels like unveiling. <laughs> it's like, you you know, instead of un the, instead of three, you get a, a bit more, but it's like entirely random of what you get, with the exception of, you know, the... the, the category. And you know what's you know what's actually uh, I feel like might be a really really annoying thing is if you wanna you wanna like craft a 
a specific item that requires crafts from multiple different categories, that's gonna take a lot of time wiggling between the two categories, hoping to get that one ex that one specific craft you need. Ooh, that's gonna be it's gonna potentially gonna be very rough. Those harvest crafting also benefit low level players. Yes, tending your garden from the earliest days. Also, I mean, you obviously you don't like get the craft for future. You have, I'd say, it's even worse from that point of view actually because it's always random. Tending your garden from the earliest stages of the game provides powerful benefits to both leveling and end game characters because level mattering on the, the monsters. You want the, want the items you. You craft to be very powerful and to provide a huge boost for getting through the storyline. For example, Exodorps are powerful currency items that are generally only available in the endgame. Some harvest crafts allow you to effectively exalt your items with specific mods. For example, physical mods on the item. Normally, uh, Exodorps are very rare due to the combination of their power tradability and what they work on any item. If we drop too many in the early game, they lose a lot of their value. However, we can give a lot of physical exalts early in the game through harvest as they can only be used on lower level items and don't have any implication for endgame. By endgame, the physical exalts become rarer, again because the value rises expo exponentially as they affect more items. Mm -hmm. Harvest crafts effectively allow you to exalt your gear by leveling along, uh, alongside dozens of other similar... Uh, which is, uh, yeah. Unprecedented! You know what's even better than exalting your gear? Getting low-level items with uh, t higher than T1 rolls on them. You know, remember Temple? The leveling Temple uh, rares? Holy shit. Like a level 10 chest with 100 life and 10% max life or something like that. And then like having the uh, Tyrannical with... Uh, you know, extra as chaos. Oh man, those were some GG leveling stuff. Also, fossils giving you like level ten added lightning, added cold in your gloves at level one because there was no level requirement. How do I get tier two seeds? Mon monsters that emerge from tier one plants have a chance to drop T two seeds when it's lane. Same principle up. Principle applies for T3 and T4 seeds. I mean, that, there's already an incentive to just keep grinding like low tiers to, to build up your pool. Oh, it's it's all the it's boys. It's back to back to talisman. Chris had it he had it his way. We're going back to talisman, where on average getting five T1s gives us one T2. Let's go. Do monsters from the garden also drop items? Yes, the main reward for trending, for tending your garden is powerful crafting options to also re receive regular items and potentially some harvest specific uniques. So this here is where I'm expecting a map map modifiers to play play a bigger effect where you have you know, high quantity and rarity, so you'll hopefully get more stuff, kind of like in with blight maps. Also, I wonder if scarabs actually affect the garden in the specific map. That could be interesting. Yeah, obviously the difference is talismans. Talismans, you wait. You didn't vendor up talismans. You you go, you put the five talismans in the uh, the ring, and then you fought the guy, the the beast, and that gave you uh, a, a next tier talisman. What's the motivation motivation for killing more monsters? The more monsters you kill, the more seeds drops you get, and the more life force you can collect 
for your crafting session. Any leftover life force can be stored and used to yield higher, higher tier plants. Slain monsters also grant experience and item drops as usual, and larger fights result in larger bonuses to item drops. We're also experimenting with creating a system that means the, the, the more monsters you kill at the time, the more item drops and life force you get relative to the size of the harvest. This would be displayed as a list of stats below the collector's harvest button, similar to the list of stats next to Metamorph Power Bar. The, the ooze bar. Will there be some way to know when your plants are ready to harvest without visiting a garden? We're currently working on some kind of signal within the UI that will alert you when you have a collector that's near plants that are ready to harvest. It's exit implementation is currently in progress and will confirm the final details. I hope they get it done. I, I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be the person who just forgets about it for like you know like ten hours. And, oh yeah, I have that stuff I need to do. I already do that with all of all of us temples. How do I get to my garden? When you when you open a seed cast, a shabby will appear from her portal. You can walk through it to access your garden, or enter it from your hideout. Actually, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't forget it because I see a shabby in every single map, right? So, never mind. Will my garden ever ever reset? No, your garden has a set size from the beginning. You'll always access the same one, but will continue to evolve as you develop. Develop your garden. You can mo move infrastructure and plants around if you put them in the wrong place. Can I choose my. Mm, wait, can I access my stats? Yes, you can craft items that are stored in your stats, but you cannot remove or add items to the stats if you're in the map. There's gonna be a very interesting uh, thing when it comes to crafting here. Uh, I've. Much like with. Uh, much like with the uh, bu 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 ancient orbs, uh, I think the convert the item to a different unique is not gonna change the size of it. So there's like three different sizes of shields. There's the two two by two, two by three, and two by fours. So you can potentially alter what unique you get out of them when it comes to that. Same goes for swords. Uh, even, even staves, because the, there is a 1 by 4 and bows and just like that. I hope there's not going to be any duping issues with this, because you're accessing your stats from there and uh, yeah, I don't know. Can I re-enter the garden if I die? Yes, unless you're in hardcore. Excuse me, I'm just going to enter with a different character. Monsters will remain until the instance closed. How does it work in parties? You will be able to access your party members' gardens by entering your salvage portal. We're still working out of the uh, details for how seed propagation will work, as well as how that will affect an individual player's progress. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm assuming that everyone's gonna get them. Oh my god. What happens if your instance crashes? Oh my god. Oh my god. You, or you D, your instance crashes on your DC and you have the items there and... Oh no! Oh shit. Oof. That's gonna be a lot of angry ready threads. Am I able to access my garden from other char characters? Yes, you have an open... But you have one acquired per leak that each of the characters within that leak can access. However, your plants will only grow if you're opening seed sketches that are from a level similar to the level of the plants in your garden. For example, you can progress your level 82 seeds while you're in mud flats. That's very nice to hear. Also, that makes me the way uh, this makes me believe that we can farm low level stuff with high level character. Uh, in the past leaks, after a certain level threshold, the leak mechanic stops spawning in lower level zones. Like, for example, right now, 
you can go to even like Act 5 Mudplats. You know, the farm. Sorry, Act 6 act Mudplats to farm uh, the, the Lion card and the, uh, the leak mechanic doesn't spawn there after I think after you're 60 or something like that I don't remember exactly what that was 59 or something like that. I don't I don't remember so I'm really curious if we can do that with a high level character also if we can't do that will it be better to have like a mid mid tier character rushing some low like early like non map zones just the search for like some some early crafts so i'm assuming that the level of the monster i i think this is like semi confirmed so far that the level of the the harvested monsters affects the much that it can roll on your item so that means that if you want to exalt something like uh, plus one of socketed uh, gems into your weapon, it should be level 55. No, I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about even lower level than that. I'm talking about farming like level 12 areas to get level uh, the level 12 you know, chaos.multi or something like that. I don't know how feasible it, like how good of an idea it is. But I'm just wondering if that's something we even can do. Do your map mods affect them? Also, it might be just like easier to obtain the exalts uh, from early stuff. So for exalting like jewels, for example, it might be faster to just do them in non-map areas than in maps. But they could also just make it so that you can't apply those crafts to high level items. So I don't know. We'll see. But I'm assuming that high level high level crafts can be applied to low level items though. So that's still a lot. That, I mean that way it's even more, more potentially insane. Because then you can craft high level... High level... Uh, uh, high level item... Like defensive stuff, for example, on a low level base. Not that it matters too much, but in that specific case, it's more of a case for like getting like a high spell damage roll or high flat or something like that to weapon. Or getting high IBD physical mod. I mean, you wouldn't do it on a low level base. It would be like a spell base where you just craft it like the plus one chaos or whatever, and then you do a high, high tier craft for chance of getting a high tier uh, other mod on them which you wouldn't normally get they just limit the tiers of mods you can get from the so if you use level 40 seed it limits the mod style yeah that's exactly what i mean that's exactly what I mean. You have a high level base. Let's say you have a high level one with an open prefix and you want a plus one to it, like plus one cold, you're better off doing it with a low level monster than a high level monster. This is like exactly what I meant. That's blocked? What do you mean? Plus. The seeds have an item level cap. Do we actually know that? It wasn't mentioned in the FAQ at least. Well, no, I haven't read this entirely yet. Do your map mods affect monsters in your garden? Uh, so I'm assuming they're trying to make it work. They're they're trying to make it, but they don't know if they have time for it. Can delirium affects delirium affect monsters in your garden? Intention is the delirium can spread through your garden. Okay. Hmm. 
I've already seen the old trailer. We checked it earlier. But yeah, Snowfly. No matter no matter what way around you do it, the cap is gonna help you with the crafting. If they introduce a cap where low level low level craft can't give you high level mods, that's good. On getting the low tier mods, such as plus one the cold or something like that. The, the only way the only way they, they can they can kind of prick that is making is it so that you can't use low level crafts on high level items. But then then you use high level crafts on low level items where you first get the other mods and then you exalt the high level mod. So it's still good. It doesn't matter which way around you do it. Okay. So that was the uh Frequently asked questions. There was some actually some good uh good information here. Much more than I expected. <laughs>